I'm going to be testing a number of popular PC games with Winlater here on the channel, but I understand that it can be confusing to know which settings you should change when trying to play these games. So in today's video, I'll show you the most common features that you should be looking at, while also explaining what they are for and why you would even want to change them from their default setting. So first up, after you install the application Winlater, it will look like this, but without any containers set up. A container is basically a virtualized instance of Windows, and that's where you will be installing your games and playing them. So to begin, we need to tap on this plus icon in the top right corner and from here we can begin setting up our container. The default screen resolution will be set to 720p, but we can tap on this drop down menu here and we can adjust this to 1080p if you would like, but this can also be brought lower to something like 800 by 600 if you have an older phone or one with a low end to mid range chipset. And this lower resolution is also good if you're wanting to play some of the older, older PC games. Next up, you have the graphics driver setting that will be used. And if your phone or tablet has a Snapdragon SOC, then that means it is using an Adreno GPU and you'll want to leave this set to Adreno slash Turnip. However, if you have a device with a MediaTek chip, one with an Exynos chip, or even a phone with the Google Tensor chip, then that has a Mali GPU, and you're gonna to want to change this to Virtual GL, the universal option. No matter which option you have, we have this settings button for it, where we can change the default version of Turnip in this instance. Or we can change the version of OpenGL if you have it set to that. Then we have the DX wrapper setting. And by default, you're likely going to see this set to DXVK but some people would recommend changing this to Wine D3D. So, if your game is made to support Direct3D versions 9 to 11, then it's best to use the DXVK option. However, Direct3D 12 games are best to use the VKD3D option. While Command and Conquer titles should be using the CNC draw option. And as mentioned, the Wine D3D is there for better compatibility of games that do not fall into those other categories. If you're not sure what your game is built for, then it's best to leave this alone unless your game fails to load. If that's the case, come back here and edit the container and change the DX wrapper setting to one of the other options. And you can cycle through these until you find one that works best for your game. You may even find that a game runs on a couple of these, but you will end up getting better performance on one compared to the other. So definitely check out this setting if you're working on getting a game up and running properly. And last up here, we have the audio driver setting, which honestly should almost always be set to the default ALSA option. However, again, if your game ends up having audio difficulties, then come back here and try the pulse audio option. And just as before, we have configuration settings for low latency, power set it saving, or none. 
that we can change from here. Once you have the basic setup ready, let's look at some of these other advanced features. So here you can change the desktop theme from light to dark. We can change the background image. And you can change the DPI, aka the font size, if you find that text is just too small on your device. Changing the GPU name doesn't really do too much, but it's almost always advised to increase the video memory size to four gigabytes instead of the default, which is set to two gigabytes. However, this also depends on how much RAM you have available. Lower end phones with a minimal amount of RAM may find that keeping it at two gigabytes or even dropping it lower can help the emulator be more stable. Some games may run better if you change some of the options in the Win Components feature, but that seems to be rare in my experience. But it's best to just be aware that they are here and know that you can change them between native and built-in if you end up running into any compatibility issues. Now, as we move on to the environment variables tab, the only option that I have seen recommended here so far is to increase the Mesa shader cache feature from the default of 512 megabytes to 1024 megabytes, AKA one gig. The drives tab will let you create multiple virtual drives within your container. And that can be useful if you have your games set up in different directories. Lastly, we have the advanced section here. The box 64 preset dropdown menu will be set to compatibility by default, but this can be changed to stability if you find that your game is crashing a lot, or it can be changed to performance if you want to try and squeeze out a few more FPS. It's usually always recommended to use the performance option here, but if the game doesn't run, then it's always a good idea to come back here and switch it to compatibility to see if that fixes the issue. The startup selection drop-down feature is also a good setting to change as well. By default, it will only load the essential services, but many people recommend that you change this to aggressive so that it will stop all services when the container starts up. And that will help to prevent the virtualized operating system from using too many of your CPU cycles. And last up here, we have the processor affinity feature. And here we can choose which cores to use and which ones to disable within the container. So far, I've read that you basically want to study the chip that's in your phone. And it's usually advised to disable the lower power cores so that your game doesn't try to get those slower cores to power it. Now I can't really go into much detail here since the chips will be different depending on which phone you have. So here it will be a good idea to do a little bit of studying, perhaps with the help of CPU Z to see which cores are clocked lower and then disabling those specific cores to help reduce those performance drops. There may be better tools suited to help you find out which cores are slower. So if you have experience in this area, then let me know down in the comment section below. 
When you're done making any changes to your container within WinLater, tap the checkbox down here in the bottom right corner to save your changes. And if you're creating a new one, again, tap that blue check mark and you'll see that newly created container appear in the list. With so many different games out there, it's difficult to find a one size fits all configuration setup with WinLater. I understand there are a lot of settings to tinker with here, but hopefully this video showed you the important ones to look at. I don't usually recommend trying to play any new AAA games that have come out in the last couple of years, but as you saw in yesterday's video, games like Tomb Raider 2013 play incredibly well on a phone with hardware that can support it. Indie games are almost always going to be your bread and butter here, since even the newest ones tend to play quite well with WinLater. I would love to see someone put together a website using Wiki that allows the community to submit their experience with playing specific games using WinLater. And maybe even I could put together something like that. Who knows? Let me know in the comments section below if that's something that you would be interested in me working on. And please, remember to like this video while also subscribing to the channel for more Android emulation content like this.